guys, today we are going to be talking about the top 10 vintage football cards of all time. But to clarify, it's going to be the Silver Age version of these cards. I'll explain what I mean. Stick around. Welcome back, everybody. Before I get started, I want to make a special announcement by video sponsor Drip Marketplace. In honor of the upcoming exciting Super Bowl that we have, they have put together a collect it bowl. What the heck is a collect a bowl? Let me tell you. So streamers on the platform are competing to get into being the top four streamers that will participate in the collect a bowl. And that will be on February 11th. Voting right now is between January 27th and February 5th. So there's only what four days left to put your votes in. I personally put my vote in for bullpen LA. And so these streamers are putting out different incentives to incentivize you to vote. The top vote getters are the four streamers streamers, and there will be $20,000 worth of giveaways and discounts that will be offered on February 11th during the Collectible. So definitely check it out, guys. I will put a link in the video description so you can go in and vote. And then also I will pin a link in the comments below. Check out Drip. This is going to be a great event. All right, let's get into it. So when I talk about Silver Age vintage football, I'm doing this kind of along the same lines as what's done in comic books, sort of. So in comic books, you've got Golden Age comic books, 30s and 40s type stuff. And then you've got Silver Age. I guess 50s might might come into Golden Age as well. And then for Silver Age, you've got kind of a lot of the Marvel DC keys that are from the 60s and 70s. And then you've got Bronze Age, 80s and some early 90s stuff. And so for this, I am mainly looking at 50s, 60s, early 70s. So, you know, we're not necessarily talking about the Bronco Nagurskis, the Newt Rockneys, the Jim Thorpes, etc. So I want to put that out there because I don't want to make the video and then people are like, whoa, dude, you forgot about all sorts of iconic football cards. And we'll probably have different videos for each. We'll break it up into different content. So without any further ado, we're going to start with the most obvious one, guys. Bobby Bear. No, I'm kidding. Obviously, we're not talking about Bobby Aber. I just wanted to show this because this was the face that he's making. This was the face that I made watching the Saints play football this year. Anywho, I'll go ahead and get into it. All right, first off, in no particular order, we've got the 58 Tops Jim Brown rookie card. I own this card in a PSA 3, one of the first cards that I bought getting back into the hobby. All-time legendary running back. Some even say he's the best overall football player of all time. And so when you're looking at really kind of important football cards, and so in any conversation where you're talking about important historical football cards, the Jimmy Brown rookie card is right there. Got to give props to the Cleveland Browns legend. Next up, 57 Tops Johnny Unitas rookie card. I own this one in a PSA 4 and a PSA 6. So in this set, you had kind of the more common cards, but then you also had shorter print cards like the Bart Starr rookie card in the same set. We'll talk about that one as well. But Johnny U, obviously one of the all-time great quarterbacks, legendary Colts quarterback. Um, he's very popular too with just vintage football card collectors. He's got to be included on this list. And really that 57 top set, one of my favorites just in terms of design. And when you're looking at those, it's really cool, the contrast in the colors. Like the Johnny U's got two different colors. The Bart Stars got got that orange and light blue. I love copies of that set that just have a great surface where the colors pop. Just very awesome. So got to include the Johnny U rookie card. Next up, I already said it, the 57 Tops Bart Star. This is the one card in 2023 that if I don't pick up any sort of kind of a, a card for my collection, it's this one. This is the one that I really want to have. I'm going to look harder in the summertime right now, as stated, I am in a buying hiatus, but I will be back, my friends. And so in the summertime, this is when I'm really going to buckle down and look for this card. Probably kind of a mid-grade, a nice looking three to five. I think three to five, maybe a six, but I think I'd be stretching as far as my price point goes for a six. Ideally, I'd love to get a really nice looking copy that's a four or five grade. Um, but we'll see. You know, we'll see how it goes. I had opportunities at last year's National for this card and just didn't pull the trigger. I didn't see one that just really fit the criteria I was looking for, and I'm only going to own one copy, so I'm just taking my time with it. Next up, the 62 Tops Fran Tarkin rookie card. 
SGC 6.5 is the one that I own. I own one copy of this. I did get it at the National last year. I'd been looking for one for a while. Black bordered card, really, really tough to get nice edges and corners because of that black border. It's like everything shows up. There can be some snow on there. Um, it's just, a, it's a really tough grade. There's not a ton of them overall that have been graded in general. So Fran Tarkenton was the original running quarterback. He was the guy that kind of did that thing. And now it's funny because all quarterbacks, it seems like in the league, have some sort of mobility to them. Tom Brady just announced his retirement here today as I'm making this video. He's one of the last ones that really wasn't much of a guy that moved around. He just kind of like scooted around the pocket. He's a complete pocket passer. Most of these new quarterbacks coming out, they can throw and they can run, but Fran Tarkenton was really the first star to do that. He owned all the passing records when he retired, and then of course now they've been broken as time has gone on, but I have to give my respect uh, to the Skull Nation and Fran Tarkenton. Next up, the 71 Tops Terry Bradshaw rookie card. I love the look of this card and really the set design in general. I have this one in an SGC 6.5. Um, the red bordering, just a very cool looking card, but again, makes it tough because everything shows up on it because it's kind of a brightish red card. But Terry Bradshaw is just one of those guys. I think there's a football life or again, a documentary on him talking about his story. You know, coming up, Chuck Knoll was not a fan of this guy. He really took all sorts of heat when he first started out. Steelers fans being very passionate. Passionate. He was kind of a quiet guy coming out of college and he became more extroverted as time went on. But I just like hearing his story because, he, man, he really was beaten down by Chuck Knoll, but they had great success together. So maybe it was just a thing where Chuck Knoll was able to get the most out of Bradshaw. They added Lynn Swan. They had great defenses in the 70s. But he's got four ranks. You know, Terry Bradshaw is a beast of a football player. And those that was before the days of concussion protocols. You know, these guys were taking massive hits. They were not protecting quarterbacks in the 70s. So big respect to Terry Bradshaw, as well as the next guy I will talk about, a guy that he battled quite a bit in the 70s, and that's 72 Tops Roger Staubach rookie card. I own two copies of this card in a PSA 6. Felt like one that I really had to own with the Dallas Cowboys just being one of those storied franchises, very popular NFL franchises globally, not just in the U.S. Outside of Staubach, you've got Troy Aikman. There's just not a lot of kind of all-time great Cowboys QBs. And so, you know, he was a guy that was really kind of buttoned up and uh, did everything everything kind of the right way. Um, he has rings himself, and so Staubach was one. I don't like kind of the, the look of this card. Not Nothing against the, the set design, because I do like 72 tops, but there's nothing really special about the card in particular. In other words, when I look at, like, I really like Bradshaw's rookie card compared to Staubach's. I don't know if it's just kind of a plain design for the, for the way his looks, Staubach's, but still, just an awesome player. Uh, Got to pay respect to Staubach. The next one is a little bit higher. He's kind of a, a higher year on my kind of silver age that, that I was looking for, but Walter Payton's rookie card, 76 top. So we're kind of getting up there in the 70s, but this is an iconic football card. If you're a football card collector, a lot of heavy duty Chicago Bears fans that collect Walter Payton and also just Bears players. But if you are a vintage football card collector, the Walter Payton rookie card is kind of one of those that it's got to ev eventually get into your collection. I own one in a PSA 6. The other thing let me mention while I'm talking about this too is the one thing I really like about vintage football is you can get a lot of these cards inexpensively in comparison to other sports. These are really kind of the legends that I'm talking about here. Yes, a lot of them are QBs. You've got a lot of legendary defensive players that are not on this list. But even these quarterbacks that have won multiple Super Bowls and QBs getting all the all the hobby love, this these cards, I mean, even this Walter Payton PSA 6 that, that I had bought, and even now if you look at them, you know, this is a five hundred dollar four or five, maybe a six hundred dollar card, which not to say that it's inexpensive, it's it's expensive, but in the grand scheme of sports cards and what sports cards cost nowadays, four or five hundred dollars doesn't buy you a hobby box of new product. And and you can have a you know a, a nice mid-grade copy of one of the best running backs of all time, 76 tops Walter Payton. So I just want to throw that out there as we're talking, because a lot of times you'll talk about vintage cards like, yeah, but I can't afford these. They're, you know, they're super expensive. Well, they're actually fairly affordable compared to what folks are paying for some of these new players and new products. All right, next up, 
65 tops Joe Namath. This is one that's evaded me as well. So the, the Bart Starr rookie and the Joe Namath rookie are high on the want list. But this, again, it's that tall boy card that some people like, some people don't. From a storage standpoint, these cards are, you know, a little tougher to fit in your, it fit in your case. I've got a, a Pete Maravich rookie card that's a tall boy as well. And it's kind of similar where it's like, it's kind of awkwardly doesn't fit in, into my, into my slab case, but, um, it's just an iconic card. It's iconic because Broadway Joe, he called his shot, said he was going to win the Super Bowl. And he's kind of one of these early NFL pioneers that really built interest in the league. I think Jets fans were formed around the excitement around Broadway Joe, which has now carried them into the fandom that is the Jets nation, the J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. You know, that kind of started going back to those Namath days and kind of the bravado that came with Joe Namath. He's a legend. So uh, the 65 tops Namath, uh, just one of those that I've got to add at some point down the line. All right, I'm going to talk about a guy that's not talked about enough, and I am and I know I'm, I might be the only content creator that talks this much about Otto Graham, but going back to the 50 Bowman, when I look at the 50 Bowman, I've got a PSA 6 of this card. It's kind of probably the same feeling that a lot of folks get when they're looking at early 50s mantle cards. You know, I mean, this card is so damn cool. It's, it's a small card, gets you a glimpse of the time period, and Otto Graham has seven titles. We keep talking about Tom Brady and his seven titles. Otto Graham for the Browns was a dominant player. And don't tell me, hey, different time, athletes are a lot bigger, faster, and everything. Yeah, that's fine. But these guys were also playing with leather helmets with barely any padding on. Uh, like we talked about earlier, no concussion protocol. They just played through it. And they're playing for pennies compared to what these guys are getting paid today. They had second and third jobs in the offseason. So you got to give big respect to guys like Otto Graham that, that were really playing for the love of the game. So definitely check this card out if you haven't. Uh, it's one of those early ones. It was kind of fringe where I'm talking about kind of golden age and silver age. This could maybe fit into the golden age. You know, there's a lot of 48 leaf legends that maybe this 50 Bowman could have fit in there, but I thought it best to put him in here for this one. All right, last but certainly not least, 1966 Philadelphia Gale Sayers rookie card. And I talked about this guy um, when I was doing my Hall of Fame auto collection. I've got a couple Gale Sayers autographs. He's got the, the most beautiful signature. Unfortunately, his career was cut short due to a knee injury. But if you watch highlights of this dude, he just glanced glided down the field. He's he's an all-time great running back that probably just doesn't give as much love or just thought about as much because of the shortened career and so forth. But check that card out. It's a very interesting card. Great picture um, of him on the card. 66 Philadelphia. That's another one that's on my list. I don't own one, but I want to own one at some point down the road. All right, guys, let me know your thoughts. What do you think about the ones that I threw out there? Are there any that I might have missed or just ones maybe that you would want to add to the list as honorable mentions? Please put those down in the comments below. Stay healthy, stay awesome, and I will talk to you again later.